We're here as part of the DC Drag City reunion. We're from the Morning Wood Show. I'm Richie Scott. This is the legendary, the one and only, the Mama Reese. You're not a legend. I was a legend last week. I'll be a legend next week. I'll always be a legend. Cut. We are Damar Maurice Bouvier. And I'm Richie Scott. From the Morning Wood Show. And we are so excited to be here today for the drag reunion and the recap of DC's Drag City. We are ready for the tea, we are ready for the shade, and we are ready for all of the drama. But are they ready? <laughs> and let's see who these women really are. Um, under the makeup, the gowns, the wigs, and all this glitter that's on the back of my chair. <laughs> and our cast today is the Epiphany Lee, the Countess Farrington, Chanel Devereaux, Raquel Savage Black, Tyria Iman, and the creator of the show, Shaquita Lee. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having How us. How long does it take for you guys to typically hit the stage from the time that you start dressing to the time when you get back? Stage, I'm ready to step on. Mm. Step on. Mm. Starting with me, it probably takes me the longest because I have. I think I have the biggest transition. It takes me about an hour and a half to two hours sometimes from beginning to end. I'm about the same. Um, you know, we we both have a long transition. Right. I've just you know been fortunate enough to afford to have silicone pumped into the face, honey. That it helps just a little bit. But yeah, about an hour and a half. It takes me about an hour and a half as well. If I'm really pressed, I can do it in 20. If not, you know, I'd like to do it in an hour. When I first started out, I used to take an hour to two hours, and now, because I do it more than these ladies do, and I'm in drag all the time, and I just throw it on about 20, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. full drag, and ready to perform. Okay. Do any of you ladies feel that age plays a big factor in your role in the show or in your performances? You know what's really funny is I don't ever really think about the age until they mention it, that she's the, the old, or like she's the oldest or she's been performing the longest or they're older. We just kind of, like we just, I don't know, if, do you guys ever think about age when we're all, I don't know, yeah. 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 And I'm, well you're the youngest. Yeah, yeah. I am so now, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, for but I, when nobody ever really thinks about age, it's just kind of like, I think drag is sort of like the ageless kind of profession. It's, it's if you can still perform and if you still can do what you do, it's just, you don't really think about the age so much. Shaquita, one of our favorite performances was the one that you gave at the Street Festival. You performed yeah. Mary J. Blige, it's just fine. Do you all have a favorite number to perform when you go out? Something that you do like all the time? Yes, um, I have several characters that I try to portray. I do Mary J. Blige, Whitney Houston, Tina Turner. So those are my, and Donna lost a little bit, but those, uh, Tina Turner and Mary J. is my strongest. Well, I absolutely hate characters to begin with. I just like putting on pretty things and putting on some pretty <laughs> hair and, and, and putting on lots and lots of jewelry. And I like going out and, you know, just kind of flirt with people. That's fair. That's fine. That's fine. He likes me. I think everybody knows I, I do Beyonce. No, everybody like, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody knew. She um, wanted to go to Remington Square about your name. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, they won't like your Beyonce there, honey. Yeah, yeah, it right. out. Right. Well, I, I do Beyonce, Tony Braxton, um, Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, but mostly Beyonce. Mm. That's what I'm known for. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm known for my Tina Turner good. impersonation as well. I've won several pageants do it with I? Tina Turner. I actually, <laughs> and in the passions that I've won, I've actually won the talent category doing Tina Turner as well. As like, I, if you think about the past, I used to do Jody Wally in character also. And I'm known for my um, outrageous costumes and my high energy numbers. Okay. No, mm -hmm. you do Tina Turner. You do Tina Turner. Yes. I do Tina Turner. Turner. She does I. <laughs> 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 I'm the number. I mean, that doesn't bother me because uh, my accomplishments speak for themselves. 
Mm-hmm. Likewise. So, um, you know, so I don't compete with her. Yeah, yeah I think she has been the top ten and the, the, the Miss Trucker pad. I actually compete against myself to make myself better. I don't compete with any of my people. Ah, okay. ah, well, I don't do the character, but um, I'm I'm just my character is totally different, more outraged. I'm more of comedy on when I'm speaking, but just my character altogether. Um, I'm more of a church lady. I do music that I feel. I'm, I'm known for doing gospel. No matter where I go on the planet, people and they know who I am. They'll always request gospel music from me, and that's simply because I do music that I feel. And if you feel it from within, then you're always going to portray the best. I don't have a certain look. I don't do characters. I've been told that I look like people, but I don't do characters at all. Sorry, girl. I was just trying to break it up. <laughs> girl, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I really don't do characters. I can, but it's not my forte. Um, like some of my songs that I love to do are "Freak" by Estelle. Um, as well as Make My Heart by Tony Braxton. So like a little upbeat, plus it helps to have a breastplate to, you know, get naked and not have to be a woman. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, Epiphany, yep. the ladies had a lot to say about your performance of Beyonce's Run the World. Mm-hmm. What did, especially Tyria <laughs> and Chanel. What did you think of their critique of your performance? Well, I don't really remember what Tyria said, but I thought it was funny that Chanel was talking about it. She said something about my costume that you'd seen it. She seen it so much. The funny thing is that costume was brand new that my had all the time. And it was a white version of a black costume from the video. And she was like, oh, you should have She started telling me about it and never really seen it. You know? So that was kind of funny. She was like, oh, we're doing that same costume or something to that effect. It's the same damn costume. It was not the same. Right. But you, you said if I see the costume more time. How do you come in on her drag and her costumes when you always wear the same stuff as well? And you, when you wear the same hair. Well, I, well, I do wear this hair a lot, but yeah. at least I have a lot of costumes. Well, why don't we see them? <laughs> <laughs> Who stores you know that are they in? Did they been because rent? You haven't been seen. My costumes. Because you can't get into because, them. Because I took five months off from people. You, can, you cannot even get into your costume. She took a hiatus off from doing drag and she came back from to, from her hiatus and she still ain't even doing her costume. Yeah. Well, what, this is new. Girl. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I advertise that. Do you, do you all make your own performance? Like yeah. performance? Uh, mm-hmm. yes. We make all our own performance. <laughs> we do. Mm-hmm. I, I also have a stylist. Thank you, Miss Beverly. You also have a stylist. So. But yeah, I, and that, that's because I can. So thank you, Shaquita, for, for helping me to perfect some of my sewing skills. But um, because she done fucked up a lot of my needles on my machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we gonna read, girl? No, we gotta uh, read. Out me and you must never fall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But no, um, seriously, I, I can sew, and when I do have time, a lot of my costumes I do make. But I'm grateful that, like, because I don't have a lot of time now, I'm grateful that I have somebody that pulls clothes for me. Okay. Now, Tiffany, do you get upset when, or are you? Um, highly critical with other people do Beyonce. Mm-mm. You stand in the wings really like... No, not at all. I've had girls say, oh, I, I did Beyonce. I hope I did you proud. I'm like, I'm not Beyonce, one. <laughs> and two, when people say, um, "Do you? what are you doing today? Do you mind if I do this song? I'm like, I didn't write, I'm not Beyonce, one, and I didn't write the songs. I don't have the rights to the song or the pat. Like, do what you want to do, you know? I, it's just something I love to do. I'm a big fan, and I... I I'm good at it, I think, and so... so you've never no been point. slightly shaded. Somebody's really mm-hmm. did a mess with Beyonce. Mm-mm. No, because I think it's... You, when you perform, you're doing your interpretation of a song. And I, I know it sounds weird, but I really don't. I don't I have... My interpretation is I like to impersonate her. I like to look like her, replicate the costumes and all that. I don't care. You know, if somebody else wants to do it and they want to wear, I don't know, like a bright red, red wig. It's... If that's what they want to do, that's what they do. That's their interpretation of it. But I don't get I'll mad see you next week in a town. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> do your best, Beyonce. Uh, all both nights in the red week and on in the red. That sounds like a challenge. Now, I would love to see an instant replay of you all skating and performing at the Ooh. same time. Yeah. Because some of you were really, really good. Yeah. Uh-huh. And some of you, not so good. Can you all tell us about that? I thought it was a good thing. It was a fundraiser we did for um, an organization here in Washington, D.C. called SMILE. It's a Sexy Minority Youth Alliance League, and it's for kids between the ages of 18 and 24. And we got together to do something different. And so we put on a uh, skate party and um, had people to come. And what I thought would make it more fun is that we actually performed on roller skates while we were there in drag. So that's how it all came about. And they were terrific. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, well, I have to give the conscious props have, for that. That was control. One space. time I thought I couldn't give the conscious props on that. Her oh, she was fantastic. Did. But that's what I meant. She's athletic. She can do all that. I wasn't surprised that she could do all that. Oh, I was. You were good. I thought that, she I was probably the best. Tyra was really good. I always thought that was amazing that she did I it in a. Well, okay, you go. Like, but, <laughs> but I thought it was amazing that she did it in like a long gown. That was really cool. And she went to church on the escape. Let's go, blind angel. You gotta take him everywhere you go, baby. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Shakuti, you talked about drag being in power. That's fascinating because you mentioned that at one point you were afraid to walk out of the house in drag. But that all changed within the past couple of years. What what changed for you? It changed for me by um, RuPaul's Drag Race that, you know, Middle of America and America now is seeing her show. And people are recognizing drag as an art form now and actually looking at it on TV. And you can go to New York or any other uh, part of California and see a big-ass billboard of a drag queen. So it has opened the eyes of a lot of Americans and stuff like that. And so I felt that it was my time now to come out and, and be comfortable with myself and accept me for being myself. And so I just woke up one day and said, I'm, I'm, I stopped with my drag on, walk out my front door, get in my car and go where I have to go and come home and not be afraid of what people say or think anymore. Yeah, that's a long way from them alley journeys, girl. Okay. <laughs> alley girl. Yes, ma'am. I would park that car in the alley <laughs> and come through the back way. <laughs> yes, honey. All right, well, speaking of empowering the counters. Yes. Tell us a little bit about why you're called the wow factor. <clears throat> I call my the wild or the wow. The wow. <laughs> wild. W O W. And I say that because I wear a lot of outrageous costumes that you're not going to see from a lot of different impersonators in DC. I make my own <laughs> stuff and it's very creative. And it shows. <clears throat> and um, it seems like when I come out in an outfit, you know, the audience members start making a lot of noise and clap when I make my entrance. So I, you know, Only when you make your entrance, but when you leave, they don't do the same. Would the other ladies agree but with you, that assessment? I, I, well, I, mean, yeah. I think that I some, agree some, with some, that. Some, Baby, she said the other ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that means you stop talking, girl. Let them talk. Well, I wasn't done. But, yes, yeah, you were. No, but I definitely agree. I think she's extremely creative. I mean, I actually like what she does, it's, and it's definitely different it's from what we from what we do. Originality, you get tens across the board, girl. I mean, I'll give it to you. All right, thank now, you. Now, some other areas, but, you know. Thank you. Now, Tyria, in uh, episode three, you literally missed a step. I did. Uh, what was going through your mind when that was happening? Well, you could stop yourself. <laughs> It was, it was kind of funny because, you know, I had just learned the choreography, like maybe hours before the, the, the event. Okay. And I still wasn't comfortable with what I was doing. And then we were on a makeshift stage, so it was kind of like there was not really a backdrop. It was just the illusion of a backdrop. And I kind of fell into that illusion. <laughs> but um, I didn't fall, you know, being athletic myself. I was probably in like nine inch heels, and I literally landed on my feet. Okay. But the funniest thing was, I was reaching for the other girls, and they were paying me. They were like, girl, we got to perform. I was like, well, they, you know, we a team, girl. They, Help they me did up. pay it. They, they, they did. <laughs> they did. But when I got back up, I was still lovely, fabulous. A tad bit embarrassed, but lovely and fabulous. Okay. Now, you redeemed yourself at the white party. You, um, you did an on-the-spot performance as Nicki Minaj. Um, is she one of your inspirations for you performing? Um, not really. Again, I, I don't really follow the character. It's kind of like, I just like what I feel. So, you know, at the time, she was what I was doing. You know, and it was hot. It was hot song. People were getting into it. And, you know, I knew the words. That's the most important part. <laughs> so, that made me sense. Okay, well, speaking of the white party, you made some pretty interesting assessments about why some of the other ladies missed it. Mm -hmm. Both Chanel and LaCountress missed the event, but Raquel, it looks like at this point in the season, you kind of missed the most events. Tell us about what was going on at that time. Um, I, outside of drag, drag is a secondary for me. Um, what comes first in my life is my daytime career, property management. I've been in the real estate industry for like 15 years and I've just never wanted to step away from that. Um, drag is secondary to me and it just came to a point where I just could not get off all the time um, and I know that at the time Shaquita probably wasn't so happy about the fact that I was missing all the time but it is what it is you know when a paycheck comes a paycheck comes and if it comes with benefits I have to go with it so unfortunately I love doing drag but I'm not doing this forever okay. so 
Now you ladies had an amazing opportunity um, to do a surprise birthday performance for Jennifer Hudson. Uh, Shaquita, how did that come about? How, what was that like? Um, <clears throat> two friends that knew me referred me to the guys who was putting the party that was in charge of the party for Jennifer Hudson. And um, actually they had found out another set of girls out of DC. They had went to Zigfields. And um, they had asked a couple of girls, there's another bar here in DC. Okay. And so when they had asked me about it, and I was like, okay, and then I just told them that I have a reality show that I'm filming, and it's six of us, and I think we'll do an amazing job of trying to put everything together. And so after I talked with the executive producer of putting it on for, for her and everything, and he liked my professionalism and how I went about out my way to make sure that I did this and did that, and then it all came together. And when they found out that I was the guy in a video with Jennifer Hudson back at Gay Pride here in DC back in 2005, I think it was, before she even got her Oscar, I was, sing I was singing in the dressing room with her. I'm changing and stash my wig off. And on her reality show that she had behind the music with MTV, okay. they, sh they put that clip in there, which I didn't even know it was cameras inside the dressing room, but oh, I wow. did it. And so when they found out that it was me, when that, they said, oh, we going with her, we going with her. Okay. So that's how it all came about. And they was like, okay, well, you know. Now you all, you all look amazing. Your performances were amazing. Hair, makeup, dresses. How long? How much notice did you know that you have to get it all together? A week. A week. I want to say something. I traveled, literally like three different buses and like a hope just to get back in time. And I only got two minutes of play. And these other girls were on the stage three and four times before I even went out. That was the shade. <laughs> But it you was know, no shade, girl. I didn't know if you was gonna make it back or not, and I wanted to take and do something to get it together. What well, girl to get it together? But you and then, well, but, but, but I do apologize for that. But what really happened was that when Raquel didn't show up, I had to make another tape and stuff like that. And I thought I cut out the song for Raquel. Okay. Then I didn't cut. I cut the song that Tyria was doing, and then we called Capri Bloomingdale, which is another drag queen in D.C., to come in at the last moment to do Raquel's portion because Raquel didn't show up. And so I cut Tyria's part. And I didn't realize it until after we had looked back at the thing. She was like, well, bitch, why my song is so fucking short? I was like, oh, girl, calm down. Yeah, I was a little in my feelings, girl. But it's okay because I love you, girl. And I'm glad we was able to express that like adults. So we're, we're good with that now. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just had to good. say it because, you know, that, that, that episode come up and said, girl, why weren't you there? I was there. They just put me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> now there were several funny moments throughout the season and in quite a few episodes we see some hilarious confrontations between the countess and most Tyria everyone, right. and Chanel regarding age and weight. How did all that start? The couch was trying to get real one day so I had to I had to put a mirror in front of her face and and show her the wrinkles. Well, I'll be, I'm 44. I'll be 45 in October. I can afford to Didn't have wrinkles. Didn't ask you that, girl. I can, I, can, I, I can afford to have wrinkles. As far as Fisha Quita, she couldn't get up the pole. So I told her that, you know, she needed to lose some weight. You're on the wrong episode, girl. This is what they're saying. They're talking she about said, when y'all was in the backseat of the car. Oh, the backseat of the car that mm -hmm. day? Oh, Lord. Um, you know, me being me, I like to antagonize the cast members. I like to start stuff. And I started it with Chanel. And, and I finished them, it. And she finished it. She got me right together. Did you ever get your money for that pageant? No. Actually, no. <laughs> she didn't get it. <laughs> no, I, no, she I, didn't get it. No, that's a funny story. Um, I didn't get the money, but um, his pageant is coming up on June 3rd. And Don't I'm talk going, about the man's pageant. And I'm going back as a former Miss Gay Virginia, and he asked me to entertain, and he told me that he's going to give me the rest of my Girl, he got to send me So it all uh -huh. worked out for the best. Mm -hmm. Girl, that's okay. the time, time, time heals all wounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Look just tell me that you accept PayPal, and that you accept a bank draft. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But everything is all right. Good, good. Okay, so Chanel, I need for you to tell us the proper rules of etiquette for putting on a lace front. Because you called out LeCountress for trying to put one on with a do-rag on. Uh-huh. <laughs> she, had, she had come in with a do-rag trying to look like trade when she was just giving me the man, the, the bum right out in front of the liquor store. You know, the ones that we all see and we try not to trip over. That's what she was given. And she was trying to put on this wig and trying to give, oh my God, don't I look lovely, don't I look lovely. Her do-rag stopped here and the lace front <laughs> was up here. I'm sitting there going, girl, really? 
Really, girl, really? Okay. <laughs> I, I, well, I, my hair was a mess, and I wasn't going to take off the do-rag to put on a wig. Well, of course and your I hair's a mess. I wanted to get the idea of what it would look like, you know, with the do-rag on, you know. But girl, you got to take off the do-rag, you put on the little stocking cap, and then you put on the lace front. Well, you know, what's your excuse? Your, your wig wouldn't even fit over your big head. <laughs> because I'm not trying to put a three-quarter cap on my head and call it a full wig. Have you guys ever seen Chanel without a wig on? Her head is huge. Huge. Yeah, we in the wig, the in the wig, wouldn't even fit on her head. Quite a few episodes, she's not wearing a wig. Yeah. And, I, and and I'm okay with that because I know how to make my own hair, and I can use my own hair, snatch it up, and put some shit on it, and make it look nice. Why well, cut, cut my hair? I cut my hair. Chanel, uh -huh. See, yes, baby. I don't want to read. But what? I just please say, feel girl, free. Come on, girl. Come say, on, girl. Please don't work with your hair more often, girl, because you can't go outside with them little boy bangs, girl. <laughs> girl that is cute, girl. That's, that's your sister, the sister girl. I don't mean to tell you this and pull you to the side, girl. We ain't talking about a girl. Get you some traps or something. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. Unfortunately, as I am Caucasian. I cannot wear they these. They make Caucasian tracks, girl. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, 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 Show yes. enough, curl. Get you a Shanae weed, girl. Yes, girl. <laughs> no, I want to go down the crack of my ass. I want to be able to. Girl, they got Do that. that. Too. They got that too. Get you some yakky rimmy, girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now the question okay. is, do they carry white girl colors, or is it only going to be a four and a thirty? Girl, I go every week. <laughs> that's why I'm thirty-nine uh, uh, minutes today, girl, to get this hair to fluff like this, girl, every week. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, Lacantris, that's what the hell you were supposed to do. <laughs> what did happen up there today? Oh, oh, next question. <laughs> she put a uh, uh, lampshade underneath it. We are going to move right along from that. Um, Shaquita, yes. you gave us some serious mahogany with your collection, Queen Couture. Tell us a little bit about that and how it came together. Oh, that was with um, Bennett Career Institute. Um, we, gave, we did a, um, they had a fundraiser for wigs for wonderful women, and we as Drag City came together and um, donated four lace front wigs for the women living with cancer or they have, um, have living with cancer or have, what's the word? Gone into remission. Gone into remission. And the Bennett Career Institute is a um, Barbara Makeup Academy school. And we went there to um, give back. And I did, um, part of the presentation was, we did a fashion show and I did my fashion line and presented that night with four lace front wigs. Are you okay? I'm just hot. I'm just. Oh, I, I heard some exhaling. I, I no, 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 I'm just hot. And you needed a minute to have something to say. Oh no, no, no. Actually, <laughs> uh, the, what they did, I wasn't there for the uh, fashion show or the benefit, but you know, I, it was a great thing that they did, and you know, uh, for women, I'm pretty sure they appreciated it. Is there any, anyone working on anything else that we could see soon? We're working on as far as, as designs. Makeup. Um, I'm actually working on some very big things in my career. Um, I don't really care to express it fully right now, but I'm, I'm moving into a different area of my career, and it's um, praying to God that it really takes me to the next level in my life, in my career, and you know, and, and I'm just like Shaquita. When I go up, I want to pull all the girls with me, so get ready. Okay, that was good. As far as myself, uh, a lot of stuff is going on. I just released my new single, My Name is Love. It's on iTunes, CD, Baby, Amazon.com. Congratulations. Com. I have a brand new flavor of ice cream. It's coming out. It's called Shaquita Lee's Food. Ooh. Yeah, it's on a jewelry line. Wow. <laughs> Big thing. And, um, what I else? could use some sorbet right now. You okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for each of you um, during the whole filming, what were some of your biggest takeaway moments? Or did anyone have an aha moment um, during the season? I um. We went to uh, St. Mary's County, and um, we performed, and then we were signing autographs afterwards, and there were gay and transgender people there, and um, while I was signing an autograph on two different occasions, a um, male to female and female to male um, transsexual came up and touched my hand while I was signing and said, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, there's not people where we live that, you know, gives us an example that this is possible. Um, and also I had a girl come up to me and, and touch my arm again and she said, she just whispered to me, she said, I haven't told my mother yet. 
And that to me, I remember being 19 years old and feeling like I didn't know anybody else that was like me and feeling like something was wrong or feeling suicidal. And um, that for me just pushed me to want to do more. Um, I feel like the first 10 years of my career was just about being pretty and being on stage and just performing. And now I want to, you know, I feel like the last two years with working with Shaquita and being inspired by her um, is just, I want to be able to help other people that are questioning or that don't have an example that know, to know that it's possible to transition or, you know, feel less than because of what someone said to them or scared to tell their parents or what people are going to think, um, you know, uh, about the living the true self. So that was really inspiring for me. That sort of changed my whole direction when that happened. Okay. Any other aha moments or regrets or anything you would have done differently as far on camera you been well, like how it came out. Well, yes. Um, I have a regret as far as when I threatened my sister at Annie's. Um, I felt really, really bad about that, and that's not in my character. And once again, I want to apologize to my sister and let her know that I am sorry for that incident. And Girl, we kept this moving in a positive direction, honey. But I just wanted to yes, thank elaborate. You. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that. The next time I'm performing on the stage, I'll make sure I look back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Well, um, for me, um, being able to do what I set out to do, to follow my dream and follow my passion, when people say, oh, girl, that ain't going to work, it ain't going to happen, or whatever like that, and those girls you got with you, they ain't going to stay with you, to stick with you. So it was some good, we all had fun moments whenever we was all together. And there were some rough times within anybody's life or drag career that you have your ups and downs. And we had a lot of those, and I found out how six other five different personalities you have to deal with was very hard as far as editing this whole show, putting it all together, pulling everything together like that is hard, and Time but the show must go on. So I feel like I have accomplished what I set out to do, and I'm proud of that, and I'm just thinking I like. It is something, you know, there, there's six of us, but we are six, you're looking at six of the best entertainers in DC. You know, we're all headliners. And it's when you put all that energy together, when you put six different personalities, some of us have more than others, but uh, <laughs> when you put all those together, it, 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 is, it can be, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's also fun too, and it is all love underneath it all. Okay. So I think the question that your viewers want to know is, will any of you be back for season two? To, that I'm going to accomplish, but I feel like um, I'll be back. You know, you may see me here and there in spurts. Sorry, sister, but I'll be there. <laughs> when the going gets tough, girl, the girls put on pumps, honey. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely, I'll be back. I think you're going to see more of my um, male side, um, just because that is what my life is so focused around right now. And well, for um, me, uh, I consider the first season being a privilege and an honor, and I'm fully going to put 110% in the second season. So yes, I would like to be a part of season two. And thank you ladies, thank you Shaquita, and thank you guys. Girl, she was answering like she had to ask permission. <laughs> 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 I want to thank you ladies for taking the time to sit down with us and letting us break down these episodes and hash out and read and pull down the shade. Um, thanks so much. This has been the DC Drag City Reunion Show. I'm Demar Marie's Boubier. I'm Richie Scott. Thanks for watching. Every Wednesday, Hump Day, is a good day for some good wood. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Check us out. This has been the DC Drag City Reunion Show. I'm Jamal Marie's Bouvier. I'm Richie Scott. Thanks for watching. To be free, hit just be, and do what you do. Express yourself. Go ahead now. Ooh. Welcome to Drag City. So welcome to Drag City to be free and just be and do what you do. Express yourself. Go ahead now.